<laughs> Let's head across the inside politics table. Ask our great reporters to give you a sneak peek into their notebooks, get you out ahead of some big political news. Lisa Lehrer. So George P. Bush made a little bit of news this week when he said he wasn't quite sure how members of his family were voting and his grandfather and uncle could potentially be voting for Hillary Clinton. Of course, he's referring to the fo two former President Bushes. And this is a pretty striking, remarkable thing. He is talking about the two past Republican presidents not ta voting for the Republican nominee for president. And I think it's a reminder of, amid all our focus on Florida polls and what's the ground game in Pennsylvania and how does African American look the turnout look in Detroit there's something really big happening right now with the Republican Party and it remains entirely unclear how they unify if they unify after this election so we are in my friends for some tumultuous times post this very ugly and tumultuous election so my advice is brace yourself I want to count it'll take a few days maybe a few weeks after the election the number of other Republicans who get write-in votes <laughs> Mary Catherine uh, I'm making the case for not freaking out I've made it about voter fraud which I don't think will change the face of the election now I make it about voter suppression in my home state of North Carolina there have been complaints about early voting and allegedly keeping black voters out with lower hours if you look at the raw numbers overall North Carolina's early voting hours up sites are up even in the most complained about County Guilford County overall hours are up and sites are up and turnout is up as of today. So let's everybody calm down. It's just as damaging to act like voter suppression is changing the whole face of the election as it is with voter fraud. Facts, you're bringing facts into the conversation. I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie. Just kind of jumping off that, every year you hear from swing state voters, they're sick of the ads, they're sick of the ads, it's the worst part of the cycle. Well, you know, this year, it, it's not that bad, guys. Uh, it, unless you live in Florida, um, in 2012, uh, $173 million went into that state um, between both campaigns. This year, we're at 120, about $128 million. But in my home state of Ohio, and I hear it every year, they're just sick of them. It's, it, 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 it's amazing how little it is. $150 million spent in 2012. This year, $71 million. So, you know, guys, it, it, while, while it's tough, you, you don't have it as bad as you used to. <laughs> Sorry about your Indians. It was a great series. Uh, it was a great Indians. series. <laughs> Ed. Always got the calves. Um, so the Washington Post and Univision have a new poll out this hour, uh, which uh, measures uh, Hispanic support. No surprise, Hillary Clinton still on top, 67% to Donald Trump's 19% overall. But diving into the numbers a little bit, if you add up Trump's Hispanic support with the willingness of others to at least consider a generic Republican presidential candidate in the future, that's more than half the Latinos right there. Doesn't mean that the next Republican not named Trump would, would win all their support, but it signals that the party does still have an opportunity. And that was the focus of a lot of chatter early on in this cycle. Would a Marco Rubio or a Jeb Bush be able to peel away Hispanic support to the point where it became even more competitive than we are today? This suggests it would have been, and it could be in the future. Pretty simple math for the Republican Party. If they don't get the lesson this cycle, they better get it by the next cycle yeah, or, or else. We'll simple. see. I'll close with this. It is crunch time, and the big prizes, as we've been discussing, like Florida, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, to a lesser degree Ohio, they're understandably getting the most attention and the most visits from the candidates and their surrogates. But Donald Trump plans two visits in these final days to tiny New Hampshire. The Granite State may offer just four electoral votes, but they are the final four in two Trump campaign scenarios, one where he just crosses the finish line to victory and another where he, both he and Clinton fall just short of the 270 needed to win. Yes, they think about these things. In that case, the election would be settled by the House of Representatives. Now, there's a significant never Trump faction among New Hampshire Republicans and most leading strategists in both parties in New Hampshire actually think Clinton is still going to win the state. Quote, smoke and mirrors, because they have to send him somewhere, is how one veteran New Hampshire Republican put this plan for Donald Trump to visit twice. But Team Trump is convinced New Hampshire can be won, and it is convinced, or at least it has convinced itself, that New Hampshire is essential to its electoral math. Most unhappy, definitely unhappy, incredibly unhappy to hear of Trump's plans? New Hampshire Republican Senator Kelly Ayotte, who's in a close re-election race and views Trump as toxic. She was hoping he would focus on the big old battlegrounds and stay away from New Hampshire in the final days so that she could get some separation. Sorry, Senator, not happening.